Hello and welcome to episode three of Time to Change. Today I have Dr. Anne Marie Risto. She is the founder of Seeing, or excuse me, I call it C, but it's a systematic equity edits. And that's a, a mouthful to say, but we're going to, it's fantastic the work that she's doing. And Matt Wood, who you got to meet yesterday in our live stream from Suiting Green Consulting. He is also an Army veteran. We are happy to have both of you here today. We, without any further ado, are going to dive right into the subject matter today. And it really focuses our attention on a couple of things. Why, since 2020, in my humble opinion, has it become more difficult for people that are disabled, autistic, neurodiverse, or that come from the veteran community. And all of those that I just mentioned are people from all different races. It is not a particular race. It's all races. So why is it so difficult for people that are in those categories to see the diversity, equity, and inclusion that's supposed to be happening nowadays in businesses and find a job and find people willing to bring them aboard and actually care about them as employees. We're going to start with you, uh, Dr. Risto. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I think the place that people start at is not even differentiating the terminology that we're using, right? We go into neurodiversity, we go into neurotypical, we go into neurodivergent. And it's just like, we, we can't keep putting labels on things. So when we think about new neurodiversity, that refers to like different ways that we think. It's neurodivergent learners who are people like um, yourself that has um, ADHD, ADD, dyslexia, or a combination of things. And the neurotypical is not like a norm that we build everything off of. Neurotypical just means that we process information in similar ways. So we can have all those elements together. And so in a workplace, strategies and things that you can put in place, those implementations, and I know Matt can speak to this as well, they are advantageous to everyone in the workplace, right? It's a way that you approach your systems, the way that you organize your institution or um, your establishment for the betterment of your employees. So I... I like to look at people's differences, but I like to approach it in systems that can support everybody in being the active contributors that they want to be. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and you are so right. I mean, we talked about this, uh, you know, off camera uh, recently where, you know, um, I, as a young kid, that wasn't something where I was being called neurodiverse or that they even recognized that I had a disability. It was, you know, why can't you hear me? Or why can't you see the board? Or, you know, what, you know, there was almost like a, Hey, we're gonna, we're not even going to recognize that there's something going on. You just need to fit in and mm -hmm. you need to get over yourself. And I feel like that since 2020, where everybody was really kind of now going crazy about diversity, you know, there was this tipping point, but th these two categories didn't, are not seeing that equity and that inclusion. And, and what do you think, Matt? I know we well, talked I, about this some yesterday. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. And I think uh, for the, at least with the military community, it's that stigma. Um, I mean, the, the word veteran is thrown around so many times that, it you know people use oh you're a veteran of this company or a veteran of that company and i've i've made it a point to change the way i talk about it as instead of using the term veteran i use the term former military professional um because for you know probably 50 years now i think i'd have to it's been a minute since i've looked it up but it, we've been an all volunteer force and these are people that volunteered to be part of a profession and they're learning skills and gaining experience hands on. But because that term veteran gets thrown at them, people think, OK, these are people that have got PTSD. They've been deployed to combat. They've seen horrible things. They're going to have all these triggers that are going to set them off. And they're just they're broken. But 
and, and I kind of touched on it yesterday, but if you, if I hand you a box of crayons and half of them are broken, you're still able to color with those crayons. So broken yeah, crayons absolutely. can still color That's and it. it's getting beyond that stigma. And, and it goes for everything, any, any population, you, you get beyond the stigma of whatever it is you're seeing and you look at the individual and take them for what they bring to the table. And that's where we start making the changes. So how do you think we convince leaders to be in that place where they really recognize people? So, yeah, I'm going to tag in here because um, what you're talking about really resonates with me. And that's why I transitioned or pivoted um, my work over this last year and a half has been Focus specifically on shifting those mindsets, right? And so I think from the leader, every role that our um, individuals who have been serving in combat and come back with any kind of um, disability or um, cognitive processing disorder, anything that uh, impacts the way that they're going to be able to still contribute, but they just need a little bit of a different approach or need to be seen as a whole person. Um, and, and that's what I've been working on. I've been looking at that concept of it's not a deficit view. You know, just looking at someone, um, sometimes we don't even see the disability, right? Um, and then we assume there's a deficit as soon as we hear it. You know, if, if we say I have, or I have had this disability, um, all of a sudden people interact with us a little differently. Or um, people try to erase the fact that we're diverse and we bring different things to the table in different ways and um, try to normalize um, or rationalize you out of the normalization. And so mm -hmm. now you're no longer a part of the normal population. And yeah. um, that concept of normal or average, I was talking with someone yesterday about um, I think it's Todd Rose, um, has this TED talk about the myth of average. And he uses the Air Force as an example in regards to how they designed their cockpits. And by changing the design of their cockpits, they were able to not only um, get better results from the pilots they had, but open up the possibility of a more diverse population of pilots too. So it's how we look at in the workplace um, what our end goal is, is it just to accomplish A, B, and C? What's our ROI? Or is it really about contributing to a greater whole? And um, I'm proud to say our millennials are really taking our workforces on by saying, you know, those social impact areas, those issues are important. And about 60 or more percent of them won't even engage in a job opportunity if it's not present within the companies that they're applying for. So there is some work moving forward, but I do think changing those misconceptions, changing those perceptions and shifting people's mindsets into the value, the great value that diversity adds in the workplace is huge. Yeah, I, I absolutely to agree on this. I mean, it is, as you mentioned, it's the, the millennials that are coming into the workforce now are looking for companies that are seeing them, not just, hey, you're a person, but they're, they're seeing them as the individual. And these are the people that are going to be moving up into in companies and making the changes there because they want that. They want to be seen. They want to be valued. Which, I mean, both the populations that we're talking about right here want the exact same thing when they're looking for jobs. And Absolutely. if they're not getting it, they're not coming to your organization. Um, so you, if you're the business leader that's saying, well, I'm iffy on doing this for whatever reason, why? What is it? What is it going to hurt you to take a chance? Right, right. And so besides the millennials kind of forcing the improvement, right? <laughs> kind of forcing that in. It's also like the misconception has been debunked or defunct on um, 
the financial impact, right? People are like, oh, I'll have to spend so much money to be mm -hmm. able to just meet this one employee's approach to work. And, and I um, am happy to say that, you know, the U.S. Job Accommodations Association or network um, proved that wrong. You know, they right. found that like 60% of the workplace adjustments do not um, require more funding just to be um, modifications or accommodations that might be helpful for neurodivergent learners. So, so that's great to know too, as a leader, that um, you shouldn't ever shy away from putting money into any of your employees for the workplace to have that mental health um, care in the environment. But knowing that there's a lot that you can do that you don't have to is, you know, a nice way to really take that misconception away. Yeah. All right. Final comments before we kick off here, Matt. Um, well, I, I'll go back to the, uh, I'll go back to the, uh, the veteran term and, and the way people see it again, going with the broken crayons, but they also see them as people that are set in a, a, a mindset. They have a certain way of doing things and they will never change that. And that's, that couldn't be further from the truth. Um, you don't come into the military knowing how to be, you know, the, the very best at whatever your, your career field is, you are taught how to do that. And former military professionals are highly trainable and right. they're just looking for that opportunity to come out, learn new t skills and things and use what they've learned already in the military community and better a company. Dr. Risto, final comment. I would just say, you know, it's very advantageous to look for people who are on the edges and the diversity has been proven to add um, higher quality in teams. It's been proven to at times increase those um, detail oriented pieces that a lot of having a lot of people who think the light the same way miss. And um, it really is about focusing on the strengths and um, looking to the full range of abilities that are on offer. Oh, yeah. Thank you both for joining me today. Such a great conversation. Short and sweet, but we got right in there and get after it.